Welcome back to Simple Science. I hope to upload more IGCS CNA level videos soon. I've been quite busy in the last few weeks, so it ha it hasn't been available. Anyway, so this week it's going to be about separation methods in IGCSE chemistry. So we're looking at how we can separate substances from each other. And this sort of relates to our previous video in our IGCSE series on um, pure and impure substances. So the point of separation methods is to basically purify a substance. Or in other words, remove substances from each other. So we have pure substances on their own. All right? So, in order to purify a substance, you need to separate the impure substances from it, right? And the examples of mixtures or solutions where we would have to do this are if we have to separate a particular solid from a liquid, like you know how we have to separate uh, pepper from water, or separating a mixture of two miscible liquids. So basically, a mixture of liquids that mix can uh, dissolve within each other. So for example, water and ethanol. Okay, so for the first example, we're going to separate a solid from a liquid, and that's basically filtration. What we basically use is a system of a filter funnel and pa filter paper, and we pass our water, uh, uh, sorry, we pass our liquid and insoluble solid into the system so that we obtain a filtrate. All right, and the second scenario is when we have to separate a mixture of two miscible liquids or basically liquids that can mix that can dissolve within each other and this method is based on trying to employ the boiling point of these liquids so if, um, what we're trying to do is to heat the mixtures of liquids to the boiling point of the liquid that is lower in boiling point in other words for example if we have a mixture of ethanol and water where ethanol has the lower boiling point which is less than 100 we try to heat the, liquid, the, the mixture up to the boiling point of ethanol so that only ethanol vaporizes and it will pass through the condenser where it condenses and uh, where we can extract the ethanol as a result in our beaker which is indicated as a pure separated liquid. So what we have now is when we heat to the boiling point of ethanol we have separated the mixture, the initial mixture into Two, uh, two li pure liquids, one is ethanol in the beaker and the remaining water in the flask because the temperature of um, boiling, the, te the temperature that we've heated to is not the boiling point of water so it won't vaporize. Of course it will evaporate but the, the, the purity of the ethanol uh, will suggest that no not much water has been condensed. So, so now what happens when we would have to separate a mixture of not just two miscible liquids, but three or more miscible liquids? You would be looking like a, uh, looking at a mixture of hydrocarbons. So we would have to use a method called fractional distillation. So how is it different from simple distillation? We are going to be using a fractionating column. And the fractionating column, when coupled with a thermometer, will allow for a more accurate temperature environment whereby the liquid will vaporize. And why do we need a more accurate temperature uh, environment? This is because the differences in the boiling points of the liquids within the mixture, the pure liquids within the mixture, are very small. So we need to be very accurate and the fractionating column allows for this to occur. All right. So similar to simple distillation, we have a condenser whereby at the specific temperatures, the pure liquids will vaporize and they will condense and they can be separated through a beaker and each time you collect a different liquid we would have to use separate beakers. So just like the previous example what we're trying to do is to heat up and extract the liquids in the order of boiling points. So the liquid with the lowest boiling point will vaporize and be extracted first and followed by um, the second lowest boiling point liquid. And the final method is not really to purify a substance, but it's to basically try to obtain crystals, um, to separate a solute from a solution. So you're thinking like obtaining sugar crystals from sugar water. Yeah, that's a good example. 
Um, so we're trying to separate a solute from a solution, and we use a method called crystallization. So this is different from evaporation, is because we're not trying to completely dehydrate our substance. We're trying to form crystals with the substance. There are very that that is different. All right. The first thing we need to do is heat the solution to evaporate some of the solvent, and we heat until it's saturated. So how do we test when the liquid is saturated? We use a glass rod and we stir in the liquid as it is heating. And we can see if there are crystals forming on the glass rod. And the moment when there are crystals forming on the glass rod is when you should stop heating because that is when the liquid has saturated. And that's where um, it, the crystallization process has begun. So once it has saturated, you stop the heating and you allow the mixture to cool and this is when it will start to crystallize and you will end up with a solid uh, with solid crystals from which you can filter and wash with distilled water and filter paper and that is crystallization you would obtain pure crystals of the initial solute okay so thank you very much for watching my video and I really hope that you can watch the previous videos to make sure you haven't missed anything during your revision and I wish you all good luck.